All right, folks, so today we are back on the Xbox Series S and we're going to be taking a look at setting up the Flycast core in RetroArch, which will allow you to play Dreamcast games. So in order to do this, you will need to have your Xbox set up in developer mode. If you've not already done that, you can check out the video here, which will show you all of the steps you'll need to take to get that up and running. And along with that, you'll also need RetroArch installed. And again, you can check this video out here, which will walk you through the steps of setting that up also. So once you have that set up, there's just a couple of extra things you need to do to get your system ready to play Dreamcast games. So we'll head over to the computer and get that all set up. So the first thing we're going to do is add Dreamcast BIOS files to your RetroArch installation. And you'll see those files there on the left of my desktop. So to add these to your installation, all we're going to do is go into our Xbox file share. Click on the Windows Apps folder. Click on the main RetroArch installation folder. Click on the system folder, and then within the system folder, we're just going to create a new folder just by clicking the new folder icon. And we're going to name that DC. And then we just have to drag and drop those files into the DC folder. Next, we're going to take a look at adding some games. And I'm going to be running my Dreamcast games from a USB flash drive. However, you can save them to your internal SSD if you'd like. So to set your games up on a flash drive, just open the flash drive up. I already have a directory set up named games. So I'm going to go inside of that directory. And once again, create a new folder just by clicking the new folder option. And I'm going to name this one Dreamcast. And then I have a couple of games here on my desktop. So again, all we need to do is drag and drop those over into the Dreamcast folder. Super straightforward. Now, if you do want to save your games onto the internal SSD, all you need to do is go into your Xbox file share, click on the Windows Apps folder, click on the main RetroArch installation folder, click on the Games folder, and then within this folder, you can actually create a new folder, same as we did on the flash drive, and just copy your games over there. So once your games are done copying, either over to your flash drive or onto your SSD, we're actually done on the computer, so now we can head over to the Xbox. Okay, so here we are on the main Xbox developer mode menu screen. So we're just going to start up RetroArch just by pressing A on RetroArch in the Games and Apps section. And then what we need to do is create a new playlist for our Dreamcast games. So on the sidebar menu, you'll see Import Content. So we're going to scroll left and down to that and press A. And then within the import content menu, we're going to scroll right and down to manual scan and press A again. Then within the manual scan menu, we're going to press A on content directory. And this is where you would locate your game files that we've just created. So in my case, with my games being on a flash drive, we're going to select E and press A. Then we're going to scroll down again to the games folder and press A. Scroll down once again to the Dreamcast folder and press A. And then we're going to scroll down one more time to scan this directory and press A. Next, back on the manual scan menu, we're going to scroll down to system name. And all we're going to do is scroll up until we find Sega Dreamcast and press A. Then we're going to scroll down to default core and press A. And in the default core list, we're just going to scroll up until we see Sega Dreamcast Naomi, which is the Flycast core and press A. Then back on the manual scan screen, there's actually no other changes that we're going to make. So we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and press A on start scan. Once the scan's complete, you'll see a notification in the bottom left hand corner. Once that's done, we're going to hit B to go back to the main menu. And you'll see on the left sidebar menu, there is now a playlist for Dreamcast. So we'll scroll over to that and you can see there the games that we added in the games folder. Then we're just going to scroll right over to the games and press A on one of the games and then A again to run. Now we do have a couple of settings that we need to change in the main Flycast core. So before we get started, I'm gonna open the quick menu real quick and we'll just go through these settings. So here in the quick menu, we're just gonna scroll down until we see options and press A. And here you'll see all of the main options for the Flycast core. So let's take a look and see what options we've got. First option you've got is a boot to BIOS. Now this one I'm going to leave turned off and essentially what this will do is if you turn this on it will boot to the main menu screen the same way that a regular Dreamcast would if you booted it without a disk in it. So if you want to do VMU maintenance this will be the way to do it. But right now I'm going to leave this turned off. Next option is system type. 
Now this gives you three options to set what type of system the core is looking for. Obviously there's Dreamcast, Naomi and Atomis Wave. This one I'm going to leave as auto because I'm probably going to be doing some Atomis Wave and Naomi games at some point. But you can select any one of the three if you're only using one type of game. The next option is HLE BIOS. This one's optional. I'm going to turn this one on as there are some games which run a little bit better using the HLE BIOS. But again, completely optional whichever way you want to go. Next is internal resolution. I'm going to set this up for 1080p, which will be perfect for what I'm using it for. However, you can go a little bit higher. So you can select the resolution that you want to use either by pressing the right button on the D-pad or by pressing A, which will open up a list for you. So we'll set that to 1080p, like I said, and we'll move on to the next. Screen orientation, no need to change that. Alpha sorting, we're going to leave that as is. Next is GD-ROM fast loading. This one I'm going to leave alone. However, if you want to speed up the loading times of your games, obviously turn this one on. We'll keep scrolling down the menu here. We've got MIP mapping, fog effects, and volume modifier. I'm going to leave those ones alone. The next two options are widescreen hack and widescreen cheats. I'm going to leave both of these off. The next option we have is cable type. And in here you can pick from TV RGB, TV composite, and VGA RGB. I'm going to leave mine on composite. And to be honest, with the upscaling that we're running, it really doesn't matter. But you do have that option to change it if you wish. Scrolling down once again. I'm going to click A on broadcast, and I'm just going to set this to NTSC because that's the region that I'm in. However, you do have the option of PAL, PAL-M, and PAL-N. Next option down is region, and I'm going to leave this on default since we will be playing games from different regions. Obviously, the emulator will pick up what the correct region is and boot accordingly. Next option is language. I'm just going to scroll down and change mine to English, but obviously you do have a couple different options there, so set that as you wish. The next option is div matching. I'm going to leave that one on auto. And then underneath that, you'll see force Windows CE mode. I'm going to turn that on because that'll make compatibility a little bit better for some of the unreleased and prototype Dreamcast titles that are out there. So the next couple options are for your controllers. First is analog stick dead zone. I'm going to leave that at 15%. Trigger dead zone. Digital triggers, I'm going to leave turned off. Next, we've got enable DSP. I'm going to leave that one on. Then we've got anti-sotropic filtering. I'm going to leave that one at four, which again is the default setting. Power VR2 post-processing filter. I'm going to leave that turned off as it does seem to have a couple of compatibility issues. Right below that, we've got the texture upscaling. I'm going to leave that one turned off. The next option is enable RTT. I'm going to leave that one turned off. And then for renderer to texture upscaling. I'm just going to leave that one at one times. The threaded rendering and synchronous rendering options, I'm just going to leave on as standard. Delay frame swapping and frame skipping, I'm going to leave turned off. Next is the Puru Puru pack, vibration pack options. Load custom textures and dump textures, I'm going to leave turned off. And then the next option is per game VMUs. Now, the way that Flycast works is when you start a game, it creates virtual VMUs, which are shared. However, if you would like to set up individual VMUs per game, you can do this by turning this option on. So if you do want to change that setting, just press the A button to open the menu and pick which option you prefer. The last two options show VMU display settings and show light gun settings. I'm just going to leave turned off. So now we've changed those settings. I'm just going to hit B to go back. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit further in the quick menu to controls and press A. And then I'm just going to scroll down to the port 1 controls just to ensure that the device type is set to controller. You do have a number of different options for your device type. So you can see here you can pick a controller, an arcade stick, keyboard, mouse, light gun, twin stick, or satin twin stick. I did have a few issues when I was testing this earlier where the control type would change to RetroPad. And when that was the case, Flycast actually wouldn't pick up that there was a controller set up. So I have to go in and change this every time. So just confirm that you have controller selected and press B to go back to the controls menu. And once you've confirmed that, you can actually save a core remap file or a save game remap file, whichever you prefer, just by selecting that option and pressing A. When you do that, you'll see a pop up in the bottom left hand corner saying that the remap file has been saved successfully. Once you're done with your controller settings, we're just going to scroll back to the options menu and press A. And then we're going to press A once again on the manage core options. And then we're going to scroll down to save content directory options. So now essentially anytime you open a game which is saved in the Dreamcast folder, all of these settings that we've just changed should automatically load.
once we're done with all the settings, we're just going to quit out of RetroArch just by going back to Main Menu, scrolling right and down to quit RetroArch, and then we're just going to hit the A button to restart RetroArch as soon as we get back to the main Xbox Developer Mode menu. Okay, so now we're back on the RetroArch main menu and all the settings are done, ready to play Dreamcast. So that's the quick setup guide for the Flycast RetroArch Core to play Dreamcast on your Xbox Series S and X. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.